Welcome to Behind the Scenes, the podcast that puts people behind the scenes in front of the scenes at least once. Today we welcome here in Kafka the brand new photographer of Ancien Belgique, Daria. Daria is born in Russia but traveled to Europe in 2015 to follow the sounds of the world. She only started as a concert photographer a year ago, so the progress she made is incredible. Daria beat more than 100 contestants who also participated in the Ancien Belgique contest. A photographer who likes dark music and considers concert venues as their second home are more than welcome in the basement of Kafka. Hello, Daria. Hello, thank ha- you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. How are you doing? Good, good. It's a bit cold, but a overall... Bit cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have a heat. <laughs> ah, it's fine, it's fine. So, are you busy right now in the last month of the year? Yes. So, last month of the year was uh, quite intense, was a lot of great shows. And then um, it's a bit sad that it's wrapping up, but I'm on a run for, uh, for quite a long time already. Yes. So, maybe it's uh, also okay but uh, I'm just really excited for last shows of the year All right, as well. Cool. How many do you have? Uh, this Oh, I didn't count actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think in average I do three, four a uh, month, uh, a week, yes. Yeah. And um, this week was one, two, three, four including a party all uh, right so that i kind of count as multiple <laughs> a bit <laughs> yeah we understand um we read that you were original from a poor village in russia well it wouldn't say a village i mean in european uh standards it's a huge city <laughs> ah, okay <laughs> but culturally it's a bit of a village okay. yeah it has like eight hundred thousand uh, people All living right. there yeah that sounds like a lot i yes, have no idea yes. how many well, people yeah, there are yeah. <laughs> not in russian standards <laughs> <laughs> and your first contact with music was through like um, illegal music CDs or yes <laughs> and can you tell us how it was to grow up there I mean you didn't have like access to a lot of things I think yeah so I mean it's not as dark as it can sound I think yeah. it's just uh, the point of where um, there was not a lot of cultural scene and movements mm-hmm. of this uh, of this kind in uh, Russia of this alternative music uh, side but there was a lot of interest and um in my town i would say i had some friends who were into music but different kinds of music mm-hmm. and fairly said i think it's still in in a sense it was much better than it is now really? uh yes with the war. because with the war yeah. and with all this uh censorship it's actually going away so when i was growing up it was um actually a different country it yeah. was uh something completely different i mean russia was um I mean, there was always problems but overall russia was uh free russia was gay which uh, <laughs> was really good. <laughs> I mean, you remember tattoo uh, yeah. and all of this. So it was just imagine this now, never. It's no. now literally they passed a law that forbids saying that you're gay. Uh, so everything is now being censored. It's like the new television series, like they get cut out the scenes uh, of... Uh, interactions of this kind or just censoring the world uh the words out of um everything so it's just really completely nuts so yeah but basically it was a bit hard because i didn't really have access or money to um go to shows there was not show no shows almost there were no live shows no local were there like bands? music venues or something yeah like? well some bars mm-hmm. or i think our in in my city there was there is no big concert venue mm-hmm. so when there were some um artists mostly russian than known bands coming it was uh in a circus mm-hmm. or in a theater drama theater or um in the ice skating ring <laughs> <laughs> but i never really went to see them uh, until i i went to moscow because i was not really interested in this kind of music and yeah we were um there was a lot of uh, kiosks uh in the main um, boulevard of the town where you can buy illegal cassettes yeah. like just uh, cd's but, but 
they are illegal as in the, like what they are singing about or the artist or... the uh, the way like it's not the official production of the label ah, okay <laughs> it's okay, just okay. someone who recorded something on the crappy quality and uh re retapes everything so and then just printed it on a piece of paper ah, okay uh and then put it in the cassette so that was kind of the <laughs> <laughs> the thing the cheaper that we, way to get the them cheaper here. way to to get the music and then yeah i also had friends who were from moscow it's like wow <laughs> <laughs> who uh sent me some stuff they recorded on a cd by post yeah so that was really cool then yeah and, that's cool uh, yes yes because there was like a big difference between the village or city you lived in moscow i think cultural wise yes there was a, a like moscow is and well a bit st petersburg as well they are really cultural centers mm -hmm. and russia is a very centralized uh space mm -hmm. so there were cultural movements a little um, in siberia as well with the local um quite known now uh, music like very depressing stuff oh, Siberian yeah. depression yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah culturally I think it's always the same like people from towns like mine they just at some point move out and go to Moscow oh really yeah yeah most of the times yes and uh, was there already like a censor censorship of art uh, when you lived there or when I lived there it began yeah. uh, it began already um, a little bit uh, after 2011 um when we had this uh, mass protest against uh, putin um Ill illegitimate uh, re-election and uh, they tr they kind of well i think they it took them a while to get to the culture really really yeah. um but uh, at some point yeah there was a bit uh, there was struggles started and they continue now when on obviously now yeah. it's just in pieces yeah so, so yeah. how yeah. do you feel about that oh uh, i mean um i mean in culture as much as important it's and close to my heart i don't think that's the main issue mm -hmm. now so i don't really think about this too much compared to how much i think about the actual war uh, but yeah, if I think about it, that's really obviously very sad because I know a lot of most of the people who are active in um, building the cultural scene in Russia, like or like friends who organized the biggest uh, underground, which which was now really big festival in mm -hmm. Russia, Bol. They uh, they were hit with COVID and then um they couldn't do it for a while and and i met them last year they were super excited about this year's edition they got nick cave in the bed seats Whoa, really? they got big bands and um obviously nothing nothing yeah. happened so and they all uh moved out of the country yeah. so now it's just a matter of like yeah it's kind of a sinking ship as well so i don't think culture unfortunately can save what russia is at this point yeah. um maybe. and do you still have like family and friends who are living there or did they all move out um, family yes yeah so my parents still live in the in this town yeah uh where i'm from and um it just for them like their normal life kind of continues yeah well although they had um the just across the river there is a military airport that was using um used to go to ukraine that was bombed i think a few weeks ago yeah but i mean they they my parents were like good good job <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fine they need to fight back yeah <laughs> so yeah so there is this layer of madness that they just uh try to deal with yeah like, normal life but i mean russian people are that are against the war I mean, they struggle obviously now and they're not always i mean leaving russia at this point is also a privilege i think yeah. you need to be able to uh get your <clears throat> belongings and yeah. some money and then uh, yeah, and move to a, another country, country with other uh, traditions and yes. things like that so. yes yes and it's difficult and i think most people try to do it but these are people in in a position that allows them uh to do it not without struggle yeah. of course but yeah that's just the reality 
And so your parents still live there? Did mm-hmm. they give you when you were living there um, like some music to listen to? Did they teach you about art or not at all? Not really, no. no. They um, they used to <laughs> watch this um, shows on the TV yeah. with like kind of variety uh, <laughs> kind of style. So mine was uh, a little bit about protests. Yeah, like, I, uh, okay. I, so you were I, like a rebel. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I was, um, there was a few nice radio stations mm-hmm. Like rock music radio and um, a few other ones that were more like interesting, like in, we'll say pop music, but uh, with a bit of a twist. Um, and were like all Russian artists or also also uh, uh, okay, yeah, international, also international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was still, um, I think, Russians are very cultural nation. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I wouldn't say it for the majority, but there was a lot of interest in um, in arts in Moscow yeah. and in Saint Petersburg. Yeah, in the big cities. Too. Yeah, but it was always out there somewhere on the internet. Yeah, and but I didn't experience this uh, in real life until yeah. I moved out yeah. of my town. When did you move uh, to Moscow? I was 17. All right. To yes. study there? To study, okay, yes, cool. yes, yes. Okay, and to, well, actually, a pretext for going to show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mom, I'm going to university. <laughs> and what did they say? They were, I mean, they were aware that this was my plan all along. Yes, yeah. yes. And um, my mom was very supportive of it because she also moved from one town to another. So she had this experience. My father was, of course also very supportive but uh, struggled with yeah. this idea more uh, but they I had like the most amazing parents I really helps me to grow yeah. like just to support me to kind of try to help me in any way to get to my dreams even if they really didn't understand them <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's really cool because it's it sounds like a Disney movie, right? From the small village to like Moscow, the big city. <laughs> yes, yes. But did they uh, did Moscow like opened a lot of doors for you, for like <laughs> photography or? No, I mean I was uh, doing photography for myself mostly, yeah. and um, I don't think I got this idea of doing concert photography. Well, it, as you know, yeah. it, it's been quite a very late bloomer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, I was doing it for myself and I met a lot of really nice people. And then also I met a lot of my friends already online when I was still in uh, my town um, through Last FM <laughs> and forums and yeah. all of that. So it was I really... Last FM is like a music. Uh... Yeah. So it was really popular at that point. Now it kind of died out, I yeah. think. Uh, but it's this thing when you install a little program to your computer or your um, player and then um, you transfer your music to the website so everybody knows what you listen to oh, okay, cool. and then it makes you the charts and all of that so I still have this profile so <laughs> I'm not like I'm not looking forward to Spotify wrapped as much as other people because oh, I already know everything <laughs> Spotify wrapped is my um, holiday yeah. period I mean it's like yes Spotify yes. wrapped yeah it's, it is pretty yeah. cool it is pretty cool yes yes but yeah so um so yeah and I met so many amazing people because it's just when you're into this experimental, obscure music so much, then it's just such a tight community. Yeah. Mostly online, but then <laughs> when we when I met these people offline as well in Moscow, yeah. we were going to shows together. I met kind of all my friends and it kind of spread out, and I'm still in contact with most of them. All right, cool. Yes. Yeah, so it's uh, it's been really great. Yeah. And uh, when did you decide to move to Europe? Euro? So, I mean, Moscow had some limitations also. Yeah. So, uh, as, in? In, as in, it's really hard to get a band in Russia. Like, they need a visa, they, ah, they yeah. need to. So, it's music wise, it's, it's actually really bonkers that I, I do think that I kind of planned out my life as to how I want to go to yeah, live yeah. shows, <laughs> but it is a, a bit true, but also ob- obviously the quality of life, the quality of education, uh, freedom as well. And just um, how people are that the 
more um le well, much less conservative mindset yeah. overall uh that really attracted me and then i went to erasmus first yes. well erasmus uh, exchange program to france angers it was really mind-blowing for me that they had like free concerts of known bands that are coming from around the world in the university halls just so crazy in my university yeah. they would be i don't know just not none of this could have happened like were you aware of like the censorship of uh, russia uh, when you were in college or did you uh, a little bit it, more yes. when you came to europe yeah well the thing is that censorship i think the biggest wave started after crimea annexation mm -hmm. so uh that was already when i was one one leg in europe Oh, okay. um, I guess so they started to um, I guess when it really hit me this realization that it is happening was um, when they cancelled a big um, techno festival outdoor techno festival um, what was it called? I don't remember um, that was really famous that people would go to from all, si all parts of Russia like travel for four days on a train and okay, so on cool and they canceled it the the same day oh. so they had a police raid yeah and um the word was that they didn't agree on how much money they pay yeah, the, yeah. the bribe was not enough or whatever so they actually the police has so much power on everything yeah. in russia and uh, so never this um, cultural organizations they are feeling safe and secure yeah. in what they will be able to do so this was like really a big yeah. uh, big hit for me personally but yeah of course a lot of things on lower scale were also happening and um i don't think that they they minded the underground culture that much mm -hmm. it was mostly um what was going on on the television yeah but i remember it's just such a huge contrast like when i was growing up we were they were art house movies on the channel that is now just fully dedicated to uh, propaganda oh. uh, pro war propaganda mm -hmm. so i was watching like romanian movies uh discussed by a panel of yeah. uh, cultural um yeah people people uh, in cinema uh on this very channel and now it's just total degradation so yeah that's uh that's yeah, it's not a... really uh it's really yeah. hard to see as well, yes, I think. Yes, 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 it is. And uh, you came to Europe to, through an exchanging program mm -hmm. with your um, study in Russia. What did you study in Russia? In Russia, I studied public relations. Okay. That was a very um, practical decision for me because yeah. when I was 17, I knew that I need to earn, be able to earn money, be independent. And um, so I didn't really consider seriously going into things that um i actually like <laughs> and then public also, relations you have what do you have communication communication yeah. yeah but more on um co commercial side yeah. of things i think so it's mostly like um pr kind of, yeah um kind of stuff yeah and i quickly kind of realized that maybe i was not my thing and um well when i i used my erasmus prog program to learn the learn the language yeah. and just discover the culture and meet people from uh france or in france, in france yeah, yes. yeah, yeah yeah and you had like the course in english or in in french in french okay. well initially they told me like I, my french was not really good at no point. i, I so, can imagine how did then, you learn it to study in well france? i did i did have lessons yeah uh before in school and in university so i did kind of understand it didn't really speak that much but um initially they told me ah, this russian educational system complete <laughs> chaos that it's going to be in in um in english yeah so i already left my student job well, job yeah. like half-time job in the advertisement agency and uh already said bye to everybody but pack my stuff and then they call me oh you know it's uh we we kind of confused everything so it's going to be in french are you still go i was like well mm, i we i yeah, guess we. Uh, <laughs> i guess <laughs> i guess i need to figure that out and uh actually it was really good decision yeah. because um i mean i struggled a lot but i learned the language essentially yeah, yeah so it was and really uh good. where was it in, Fran in france Angers. Angers. 
uh, the Angers, uh, it's, um, I think, a bit close to Nantes. Ah. Um, but is it the south, the north? Uh, it's like mid, mid, mid okay. uh, <laughs> Palais de la Loire. So it's like the, the castle. Okay, and all of yeah. That. So oh, it's right. not the it's most. Not I mean, I would say I was really in love with the town, no. but it's um, it's not the most young and cultural no. <laughs> city in uh, France. But still, they had this uh, amazing Levitation festival of mm -hmm. psychedelic uh, rock. So that was that really was your, cool. your kind of thing yes. to go. To. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, yes. Glenn agrees. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you had the chance, would you like study photography or something like that? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I would uh, I would do that. I think that that's now my my dream kind of just do go to school and I fill the blanks and yeah. then go and practice and just I think it would be such an amazing opportunity to have time purely dedicated to doing photography. That's just such a luxury uh I think and that's my dream but I'm not sure that at this stage of my life that would have been possible. Mm -hmm. And it's fine also, I mean, it's... Um, Because I think you also can get the skills without going to yes, school, right? Yes, yes, So that's... Uh, but it's mostly about the time and empowerment of just dedicating yeah. my time to it fully, which I sometimes a bit miss uh, with having another job, yeah, uh, day, day job, job yeah. uh, at this point. But that would be uh, that would be really cool, yeah. Because now you you're learning everything without school. What are like the advantage uh, things of learning photography without going to school? I think it's uh, having this fresh eye, maybe yeah. just um, it's it's a uh, yeah it's it has some good sides and bad sides. From good sides is that you you're not uh, you're just being yourself, I mm -hmm. guess, without anyone like uh, potentially a teacher to bring you down. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some stories about this. So yeah, I'm like, about photography school. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like really encouraging and just being able to meet. Uh, so basically you're learning from your peers mm -hmm. and then from the input that they give you and just from this uh, same level communication, just getting inspired, exchanging and all of this. So that I think is a huge and uh, well a con is like sometimes I do get lost a little bit in uh, this wealth of information yeah. and I just think that would be so nice if I can just ask, ask someone, someone. Yeah. yes and did you uh, learn your skills through YouTube or just asking people yes yeah, so I also was um, I was interested in photography for quite a while but mostly like for myself And uh, so when I finished my Erasmus, I went back to Moscow and then I went back uh, to France to study Master of uh, Cultural Project Management. Yes. And then I had an internship in Arles, uh, yeah. Les Rencontres d'Arles Festival, yeah. like the biggest photo festival in Europe, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, or maybe I'm biased, but <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really good. So it's basically just all the, the the best photography of the year of the world in one place all right for, well, that's a, for a summer of expos it's so much uh it's the heaven for photographers I yes think. yes yes so then i learned a lot uh, i was in education department and then we were planning um uh, planning programs for people who are Uh, visual educators for children or adults. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a lot of uh, inputs for me to gain visual education from for myself yes. as well. Because uh, when did you get your uh, got your first camera? That was quite early, actually. Yeah. I got a gift from from my parents when oh, I was, cool. I think, seventeen. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, yes, nice. Yes, that's why I tell like my dreams. My parents yeah. are really super encouraging. Always like. Um, Yeah, it was really good. Okay, yeah. cool. 
books and uh, we read on LinkedIn, you're a marketer by day and a concert photographer by night. Yes. It's on the internet. <laughs> yes, it's out there. <laughs> <laughs> How can you uh, balance these two jobs? Yeah, so both uh, things are very demanding. Yeah. And um, but I think that um, it's a way of tracking where do I get my energy from mm -hmm. and actually I absolutely get my energy from concerts mm -hmm. so that brings me um like good mental state for my main job as yeah, well okay, cool. so that I can I can do both and uh sometimes I, I it is challenging yeah. because I do travel for work sometimes and um because I think uh, for the people who don't know um You live in Antwerp, but mm -hmm. you have to go to Brussels a lot. Mm -hmm. And your day job is here in Antwerp. In Antwerp, yes. So, yeah, yes. you have to travel a lot. Yes, and I think yes. it, it uh, takes a lot of energy as well. Yes, yes. But I do like trains. I'm just uh, looking forward to not do anything on the train yeah. or answer emails on yeah. the train or uh, post on Instagram on the train. So it's, yes, yes. Or sometimes really not. <laughs> but that's also fine. <laughs> Sleeping a bit. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, but uh, you have like a long nights when you're photographing. Uh, yeah. Um, and when you have to wake up for your job. That's a lot of coffee. Yeah, a lot of coffee. Yes, yes. But I do sometimes, uh, my my team is really um, also um, supportive yeah. of it. So I take sometimes morning off or something. Oh, so I cool. have, yeah, I don't take a long holidays. I didn't take long holidays last year. So I kind of plug in yeah. my days off when I need them. So it kind of really works. And once you get used to it, you just have all your evenings full. And um, there's it's a matter of finding a balance because I still want to see my friends mm -hmm. and uh, just... One I, I decided one evening a week I'm just going to be a vegetable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just uh, nothing, nothing. And um, yeah, it actually works quite well because then um, you just kind of get into the rhythm. And um, it's also really nice that your um, colleagues are like yes, supportive and they yes. understand that yeah, you really yeah, like yeah, to do yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, concerts, of course. Yes, so. yes, yeah. Yeah, and then I, I'm just like, what? did I do before? How did I spend my evenings? That's such a long time after you uh, finish your day job. That's just uh, all these hours. And, I have uh, the same. Yeah. <laughs> People are always like, yeah, you're so busy. But I'm like, yeah, what have to, what have do I you do? Yeah. Then if I don't do anything, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm just watching TV. Yes, I yes. prefer concerts. Yes. Instead. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that we are talking about your jobs, you just started this year as the new uh, photographer of Ancien Belgique. Um, for people who don't know, there was like a contest, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what did you have to send over to? So you just basically had to select five your best or favorite photos mm -hmm. and submit them with a motivation letter. Um, so yeah, I did that. Yeah, uh, and how did you approach like the motivation letter? <laughs> <laughs> I was overthinking it yeah. so much. <laughs> And uh, shout out to my friends who uh, bared with me over this weekend when I was like, what do I put there? Is this is this OK? Do I do I say this? Is this too much? Is this uh, OK, you think? So they yeah. hadn't held my hand <laughs> through all of this. <laughs> and um, the pictures, did you have to think a long time um, to choose the five you had to I send over? I think it took me less time than motivation letter, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I did have my favorites, and yeah, I was um, there were few that I knew would be good because they were in uh, selected by tricks when I participated in the workshop. Cool as well because that's one thing that uh, was really a big step for me participating in workshop of concert photography yeah. and tricks uh, with Michelle yeah uh, that just uh, was such a big step yeah. forwards it's incredible yes Glenn, Glenn you also did uh... yeah I did it yes uh, and I took pictures of yeah, Glenn my... <laughs> <laughs> doing that after I took a workshop uh, in tricks so it was really meta <laughs> It was a different mentor, though, for me. Yes. I had Cherson. Yes, he's yeah. so good. Yes, yeah, he's, he's well. great. Yes, he's yes. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think your mine was uh, four four uh, times. So and yours, I think, was one. Yeah, it's just once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a little bit of different type. 
um but yeah it was uh, it was just really amazing because i was uh photographing in her boss before which also was like it's actually like the amount of amazing things and people and venues that happened last year is just incredible you just like text them like hey i want to shoot or so in her boss i uh there was a new volunteer co coordinator basim who um th they put stickers all over town yeah. with uh say hey do you want to be a volunteer yeah. in boss and then they told uh, in well there was written in a poster that they are looking for photographers and that was the eureka moment for me yeah. <laughs> it's like just i think i saw it on the in the bathroom of a club i was like washing my crying. hands like Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> and then i still uh, i was really nervous i didn't do any photos of shows yeah. uh before so i just uh emailed uh but seemed very i remember very formal email like hello um i would be really interested and then um i sent him a link to my instagram like just maybe i can do this <laughs> And he was really super nice uh, to be from the start. We met, I signed the contract. I was like, I want to do everything. Can I do everything? <laughs> and he's like, yes. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, yeah. So um, that started in Hot Boss. But then I was just, um, I mean, they were super nice to me. They liked the pictures, but still I was like, what am I doing? I'm not sure what I'm yeah. doing. I never did this. Is this okay? What yeah. I'm doing or not? Uh, what are the rules? What is happening out? What is out there? A lot of people are doing it. So there's surely some kind of industry standard. Should I adhere oh, right. to that or mm -hmm. should I not? And what is acceptable? What is not acceptable? Just kind of trying to learn the language of yeah. concert photography as well. Like all this... Uh, grain is yeah. the grain is okay or not and how okay. when big picture is usable or not usable so i had a lot of questions about kind of the rules yes in my head i wasn't sure what uh what if what i was doing was uh was okay and then when i saw this opportunity in tricks it's like book book <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously i i saw that it was michelle who was yeah. giving the lessons and i uh, it was like oh holy shit she's uh, in house photographer at Cien Belgique and I also looked at her picture like absolutely incredible yes. pictures like oh wow I need to be your star yes yes <laughs> yes and um yeah because I think like one of the most uh vulnerable things you won uh, of the con contest is like the uh, teaching of Michelle she helps you, I think, right now. Yes, yes, so yes. She guides you. Yes. So she was really uh, for this workshop, such an amazing mentor. So immediately I was like, the annoying, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I don't get this. And um, she just told me like, yeah, there, there are rules, but yeah. you don't have to do anything by yeah. the rules. I was like, ah, oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> validated in my approach and um she gave so many tips and was also really encouraging yeah. just saying you can do this you're amazing just just go for it oh she's really sweet yeah she's like one of best people in the world for oh. sure yes michelle is really amazing yes and then and yeah everyone in the group we just felt so i think it was a uh, sentiment of the whole workshop that uh, it was just really we wanted to get there and try it <laughs> and just continue with it and uh, yeah so for me it was surely a huge step all right cool and are you now um, um, happy with the pictures you take or do you still want feedback um... <laughs> I overthink yeah. things a lot <laughs> uh, so yes <laughs> I am sometimes happy but I if mean, you compare your pictures with other ones you can really see it's good or not right it's sometimes it's difficult yeah. for me yes yes um sometimes it is difficult um to really place myself on like how do i how do i see what's the value of the work mm -hmm. and i usually i try to just go straightforward do i like it do i like it 
and uh, do I want to do I think that do I think they are special so that's my criteria so if I took some pictures and I think it's it's um, I mean I think it's a bit over overdoing it if you think that all pictures should be special mm -hmm. But I certainly, some in the back of my head, I do have this criteria okay. for myself a bit. And um, I mean, I honestly, I don't think I'm ever happy. Uh, no. Yes. And uh, that's just a bit of a, my struggle that yeah. I just want more always, like better. And um, I think that's a motivator if I'm in, in the right state of mind. But sometimes it's really a big struggle. Yeah. And I get too wrapped up in uh, editing and in overthinking everything and uh, getting on a little bit of um, losing my cuckoo <laughs> a little oh, bit. That's sad, and though, because if I am on a concert and I feel like uh, the lightning is bad, I'm not good, I'm like angry. <laughs> and, yeah. and most of the time I leave after like three songs. Mm. But if you have it with every gig, I think it's really exhausting. Now. Yes, I try. I think I'm getting better. Yeah. I mean, I'm. Uh, it's not to say like I'm really sad or something. No, I no, just no. always, almost always think you always can do better, okay. and I try to always do it better. And then I cannot leave if I don't think I did uh, something that I'm confident um, with. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I think creative process. Let's be frank about it. Like it's, it's such a beautiful thing to do. But it really sometimes uh, gets yeah. in your head uh, as well. That's true. Yeah. And um, like getting advice and feedback is like one thing, but how important is um, gear if you're doing concept photography? Mm. Because you're shooting a lot in low light. Yes. Um, sometimes it's like really bad lightning or just like one color you just can't work with. Yes, yes. I don't think it's unimportant. Mm -hmm. And um, I, m myself, I just, um, um, I changed my camera this year yeah. because I had a crop sensor yeah. and then I went to full sensor. Uh, what gear do you use now? Now Sony AR3 okay. and then two lenses, 1.4, all of them. And I just, again, had this, like, I need to do the best job possible. Yeah. So I halved my savings account. <laughs> for this uh, and uh, I, it's all second hand obviously yeah. because then it costs like a leg it's crazy yeah. but then I was just Sony so is really expensive yes it's uh, but I really wanted to do do good good job yeah. um, and I thought if this was I really love this it's going to help me let's just go for it and uh, I'll sell my organs later. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, we'll figure it out <laughs> yes and uh, do you think you would get like the same kind of style you're shooting uh, with other gear I think with other gear my pictures would be more edited like uh, grain <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. because um, what ISO do you normally use it's varied, I guess. I saw it really depends on the yeah, concerts, okay. um, but I do shoot uh, with variable ISO oh, as okay, well. Yeah. I just let it go a little bit, and um, because a lot of concerts, I try to catch these moments when light is going around yeah. and then just hits the fa yeah. the the right spot, and then it's just really crazy to do it with manual settings mm -hmm. so i adapt them adapt the things that i need to be stable like shutter speed and um, um opening what's it called in english and um, aperture um, aperture yes and um which is always the lightest yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually <laughs> so yeah and i so i just leave it variable okay. and if it's uh if it's a stable lightning then i can yeah. uh, do it differently but yeah just uh and you're trying to catch it because um if uh, people really check out their work but you really um how can i say how would you describe your style oh my god <laughs> because um if i look um, at my own pictures i use a lot of contrast like mm -hmm. um a lot of lights popping out but you do the opposite yes, kind of? yes. yes. yeah yeah how yeah. do you get that kind of pictures well i think i'm getting inspired by the cinematic style a bit like a bit vintage mm -hmm. like von Carvai a little bit so i tend to desaturate things more than saturate um and trying to keep it in on the minimalistic side as well 
Um, I do like to use color, uh, but when it's, it's not always nice <laughs> how it is. So it's a mix between like, do I think the color is uh, good for the picture? If not, then black and white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's really a thing. If the lightning sucks, mm -hmm. people put it in black and white, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. 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 I don't understand like photographers, if sometimes um, for people who don't know, if you go to a gig, you're most of the time not the only photographer mm -hmm. who's like running around there. And if you compare the pictures of the same gig, yeah. And I all already went to gigs where the lightning was really good, and then other photographers put it in black and white. <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> why are you doing? No, sometimes it does work better somehow in yeah, black and white. Yeah, but if you have good lightning. I, I just love black and white also. <laughs> yeah, no, really? Just... Oh, no, I'm not a big no. fan of black and white. No, I mean, I guess that's the influence of uh, this all the cinematography, yeah. uh, cinematographic influences yeah. that I watched a lot of movies when I was in the university. And I kind of, I think I get the style a little bit from these references. Yeah. And now I'm just realizing it now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's that's what it is yeah <laughs> no i really like um your your style but what is your workflow if you go to a concert from the beginning to the end um how do you approach the gig so uh well let's say maybe just uh, take an example of ancien belgique i well pack my stuff go on a train <laughs> and all of that and then i arrive and uh I'm, I'm putting my camera on me and then another lens and then a few crystals as oh, well. Yeah, yes. I sometimes really like it, depending on the show. Sometimes it works, sometimes like if it's very dreamy, mm -hmm. uh, it does work quite well, I think. And um, basically, so three songs near the stage, but it's uh, sometimes they, uh, they are barriers. So yeah. then it's really easy. So yeah. you can move around, kind of follow the performance, really. Yeah, uh, it's like the, the in photography pit. Yeah. Only the photographers are there and then you have a lot of space. To yes, yes, shoot. indeed, indeed. Um, and um, then I go out and I stay until the end of the show. Oh, you really watch the whole show? I uh, photograph the whole yeah. show. Okay. Yes. And um, I, because I usually, I'm not 100% happy with pictures from the pit because they're not my favorite angle. Same. Yes, so I try to weave myself respectfully in the crowd. Yes. It is sometimes completely impossible. Yeah. Uh, I'm sometimes going on a balcony. Well, I do. I then I go on the balconies as well, just everywhere that I can go to find a nice angle. From the balcony, I look <laughs> downstairs. I like, okay, I see a spot there. Let's go. <laughs> and uh, trying to uh, capture the atmosphere as well, if I can. Like people also enjoying the show, and then the lights from back uh, of um, the venue just have a bit of different varied uh, set of frames. I think that's the um, the approach. And um, I shoot uh, quite a big amount of pictures yes, as well. how many? Yes. I'm <laughs> no, you're not going to tell no. us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, because I, I'm going for capturing the moment, like yeah. the moment as well. So I sometimes put it on, um, what's it called in English? The, when you take a lot of frames yeah, per second. High shutter. Yes, if yeah. the moment is worth it, then I go for it. So afterwards I'm home, I'm like, Daria, why did you do this to yourself Yeah, that's again? it. I really stopped with taking a lot of pictures. Yes, I am getting, again, that's my point of progress that I need to make just chill out a little yeah. bit <laughs> just don't don't push push it too hard but I'm always a bit too much <laughs> anyway uh, I try to get better at it and I think I with this latest shows in Ancien Belgique it really depends on how energetic the show is how the light is if I see uh, this crazy things keep on happening I'm just I need to take pictures of everything <laughs> on this in this moment. Like sometimes, just oh, the whole show is incredible, and uh, then I can't stop. And I just Daria, stop! It's stop, it's enough. Just stop! It's enough. It's okay. You got this. No. <laughs> what if? Uh, How this... many pictures do you have to deliver to uh, answer? Ten. Ten. So I'm just <laughs> you know I'm. 
shooting myself in the leg here. Yeah. But uh, that's it. That's just this makes my selection process a bit difficult. Yeah. But then again, I'm just always going for like really let's do something special. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just really having this uh, sense of responsibility as well, I think, just because it's such amazing artists and people in the in the venue they they just enjoy it so much and i enjoy it of course as well but on a bit of a different uh, on my little thing yes. that i'm doing as well and uh, i just really want them to uh, yeah to get a nice memory and to capture the vibe and the atmosphere correctly well also like adding my interpretation yes. which is inevitable um and yeah and just yeah overthinking it a little bit <laughs> so then i go home i put my uh transfer of photos in my backpack yes. while i'm traveling oh, and then okay, they yeah. uh they uh, travel with me while uploading <laughs> and then i go home and i do the selection and i do the edi editing on in the night and then in in uh and i send the pictures the next day okay so you really edit uh, the nights mm -hmm. of the concert mm -hmm. How tired are you after that? <laughs> a lot of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, cool. I don't do it straight after the gig. I can't. I just do it the next morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but it's just um, if I do it the same night, I'm too tired. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I'm go I am becoming lazy mm -hmm. and I don't have the same results. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the reason I most of the time deliver the pictures like before noon. Next yeah. Day. Yeah. So, yeah, if I have a morning off, then I do it as well. Yeah, I, I, but I prefer to split it a mm -hmm. little bit. So just go through the photos, make the selection because that's for me is already hard yeah. enough. I also overthink the selection and all mm -hmm. this, uh, and um, and then I do the editing if I have morning off next morning. Uh, but my, I guess what I'm lucky with in a sense is that I'm really a night person. Oh, okay. I, you know, I, I'm fine. If I'm not even taking pictures or doing anything, I'll probably get to sleep at two at anyway. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's why it kind of works. Yeah, as well. Yeah, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, many people uh, see it as a privilege to be like a concert photographer, and which means um, that many concert photographers are shooting for free. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your opinion about that? That's an interesting question. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, uh, I think that everyone needs to get the fair payments uh, for the job that they're delivering. Mm -hmm. So basically, I think it's it's also a job and it deserves to be paid. And uh, it's not because it's fun to do that it's uh, it does it's not the work that you're doing. Because I mean, I sometimes I realize that this whole shooting a gig that's actually eight hours kind of a work with travel with being there editing afterwards selecting all of that it's a full working day so um i think that it's a problem in the whole arts and industry that as um as soon as it's nice and fun enough then we just uh considered like you know just do your real job yeah and then uh get some monies and then you can relax while uh, <laughs> you're doing your second job yeah. you know that i think is the opinion of some politicians yeah. as well currently well Antwerp, you're not yes. doing great yes yes <laughs> um which i think is not fair and i think that um people should be able to get fair payments for the work that they're doing for sure uh yeah. just i as think a it's really a problem in the industry yes Yes, yes. It's yes. so, I mean, they're just like, yeah, but you can go to the concert. I'm yeah, much. but yes, yes, thank you. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a, it, also, it's a bit of a, I would say, I, I, I mean, I love this. And for, for me, going to a concert that now kind of equals photographing mm -hmm. it. Uh, but you're, it's a bit different. You're working. Mm -hmm. You're not, I, I, um cannot hear the music the same way that i hear it and i pay attention to it when i'm not working so yes. it's also not like mm, just giving this opportunity of going to concerts but you're getting something back right yes. so 
that's that's the yes, deal they, that should be uh, i if i had like the chance i would never shoot my favorite artist because it's like i'm working then and mm -hmm. and i can't enjoy the show mm -hmm. as much as if i'm yeah. a Visitor, so. Yeah, I do enjoy, I think, shooting my favorite artist, but then afterwards I'm like, damn, and now I really want to go yeah. to just be in that mosh pit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like my I, I don't go there with my camera, but <laughs> I really want to be there. <laughs> because uh what kind of music do you listen to a lot? Uh, different things. Um well what did my Spotify rap? Oh, okay, that's <laughs> no uh so uh i listen to a lot of funk i guess right uh like idols yeah that's idols my idols. i, love I them. saw them on the i think they were at rock Richter this year it was oh, the first yeah. time i saw them i was like what is this yes it's such they a were crazy also show. This year, I right? took pictures. Ah, yes. Okay, yes, cool. yes. And that's why I thought I need to go again yeah. as well. Maybe take another set of pictures, yeah. actually, just five time pictures, one yeah. time just right, ah, okay. like just everyday idols. That's fine. But I mean there there needs to be a bit of a recovery after yeah. idols, I think, <laughs> as well. <laughs> yes, and um well, a bit of like art artsy pop i mm -hmm. guess post punk a lot being russian that's uh, kind of a pre-requirement i guess <laughs> really? that's, that's our thing uh, yes. okay, cool. being sad and uh, black and white <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> uh what we do and uh hip hop a little bit but a lot of experimental like uh, stuff but also a lot of electronic stuff lately yeah. Mm, so yeah that's i'm always a bit confused by these questions i'm like okay how do yeah. i <laughs> put it all together yes do you like to shoot gigs uh, of bands who you don't like no yeah. <laughs> i mean yes and no i guess but um i um I, I want to shoot everything so mm -hmm. uh but sometimes i would just it was a bit of a um recent realization that sometimes uh you just need to give way to people who actually love the band in because there's i think it's visible in the pictures how do you relate to this yeah and i think maybe my style does not um it sometimes a bit clashes with some of the music genres yes while the bands are that they're really nice and great uh and um i enjoy the experience but i thinking maybe i need to give way to people who would mm, be into it yeah uh, enjoying the have, music as well have yeah. the connection yeah. with the music as well yeah. because sometimes if i don't feel the connection then it's really it's, hard it's hard to shoot right? it's hard because you need to feel it to be able to interpret yes the show um so yeah i, I think a lot of uh, concert photographers relate yes yes even if i'm like having a bad day and i have to shoot you always mm -hmm. see it in my, in yes, my pictures, I think. yes yes i think it's visible yeah 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 all right um and who do you look up to as a photographer who do you like uh lots of people actually well michelle yeah. <laughs> Also Lucinda, uh she's she's photographing uh in Abe and Tricks as well. All right. She was like a huge inspiration when I was starting. Uh like I really love the pictures that she's doing, like they're so out there and uh yeah, just dynamic mm -hmm. and um actually like really I have a long list. <laughs> No, so, we have time. We have time. <laughs> no, but uh, do you also um, are like a bit jealous of people of no? Um, do you have photographers who don't shoot concert um, concerts who also are really nice? You mm -hmm, think? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So my problem with this is a bit that I don't retain names of photographers. Ah, okay, no, no problem. So well, so I I I really. Uh, get to know the artist and their work and then i'm like wow i'm getting inspired and then i forget the name <laughs> no problem it's really bad but uh usually that's um the, the stuff i'm really inspired uh is a little bit 
different. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I quite like um, pictures that are um, giving the mood and the feeling more than showing the subjects of uh, okay. the photo. Yeah. So I really tend to see all this um, uh, film heavily processed, altered um, images out there and I really enjoy them and I'm like, how did they do it? <laughs> How did they do that? That's so much talent that they have. And honestly, in Antwerp and Belgium, it's just so many inspiring photographers out there. It's crazy. It's such a visually oriented country, I find. Um, it's cool. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of inspiration. I think we're just kind of sweet. I, I don't know. It's kind of we're switching the language now. We were so... Uh, we are so image oriented. I think even if we compare to what what was uh, thirty years ago, how it was, so people overall, I think, have really high visual literacy, and they're doing a lot of people are doing amazing job with uh, image production and uh, so on and so on. Do you so think a at a certain point there are going to be? Too many photographers or <laughs> for no. like paid jobs or something? For paid jobs, it's already, I think. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, where are the paid jobs for <laughs> photographers? <laughs> uh, but it is a very competitive field, isn't it? So yeah. that's, that's I think, is already happening at some mm. point. Um, because you your main job is not photography. Mm -hmm. Do you hope like one day you can live as a photographer? Uh, would be nice, yeah. <laughs> but I realistically, I'm thinking, I'm I'm never into the genre of photography that is bringing money, yeah, <laughs> like somehow. commercial, like B two B. Yes, yes, All and right. um, weddings. I'm not really, mm, no. uh, not really my thing. <laughs> and again, people who do weddings, they have. I think again, it works for uh, this because they have this connection. They have this. They can capture the most feeling, of the, the time. Moment. You're like a, the hater or a lover of weddings. Of weddings, I have been to two weddings in my life yeah. only. No, but uh, to shoot it. Yeah. To shoot it. Yeah. I never did it. No. Um, Most of the time, you you really love it or you really hate it. <laughs> well, so if you talk with like uh, people who shot weddings in the past, yeah. or people were shooting weddings now, but uh, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I have a sense that maybe I wouldn't uh, depend on a wedding, I guess. But uh, mm, yeah, still. It's, um, no, it's not really my thing. No, same. So yeah, just filtering out everything that. Uh, like if you have a list of all the stuff that you can make with photography that brings money, just no, 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 no. no. <laughs> you prefer like the arts, uh, artsy photography or? As an inspiration, yeah. yes, okay. yes. And then I'm just really enjoying doing, concentrating on music photography now. So that's also, yeah. um, I think now kind of my uh, my thing that I'm doing. Uh, and really enjoying it at uh, this point and will continue probably because what did you shoot before concert uh i shot for myself a bit of street a yeah. bit so mostly documentary stuff oh, okay. so yeah. not um not nothing not too many portraits also just um kind of capturing the world around me <laughs> and um actually the, there was a funny realization because I, I was photographing a lot for myself in COVID. And um, I just bought all these uh, colored lights and then uh, was shooting a lot uh, in the night mm -hmm. with all these flashlights with color gels in red and green and blue. And uh, when I started concert photography, I was like, wait, you already kind of were doing concert <laughs> photography just by yourself. Yes. So. <laughs> You just had to give a performance and capture yes, it. Yes, yes, They just needed to start uh, concerts yeah. uh, <laughs> again. <laughs> All right, and uh, we have one uh, last, maybe a, a hard question. Oh but, my gosh! Um, if you um, or you have to, you, it's a choosing thing. So okay, um, photographing your favorite artist all time at their uh, last concert, concert, but only for three songs, and then leaving the hall. Or watch the entire show in uh, in the front row. 
Glenn, what would you choose? I'd honestly just choose to watch a show. Same. Because when you work, you're not really there. Yeah, and you in the only can way. see like three songs. Exactly. But exactly. you're the only photographer there. Still, I'll just watch a show. Uh, I would photograph. <laughs> Yeah. Really? Yes. That's dedication. Three three songs, and then you have to go out. Yes. Hmm. I Favorite would, artist I, all why? time. Why? <sighs> <laughs> I already thinking I would I would go to another city to see <laughs> to say that, to see the show, but uh, for me I think it's just um, how I process music mm. at this point of my life as well. And um, it's just, I remember, it's just such a different experience as well when you're close to the stage. Like I, I <laughs> cried a bit a few times. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm there. And I mean, a lot of artists, my favorite artists, like I'm, I'm being really spoiled because I, I did see a lot of uh, live performances of my favorite artists in my life. So that's maybe why. And now it's a different, you know, I just started it this year and now I want to do this and only this. Yes. Uh, not only this, but <laughs> um, mostly this. And uh, that's why I think now it's the time to, uh, to photograph and uh, enjoy this part as well. Okay, I think that's a really uh, nice way to end this podcast. <laughs> um, thank you for coming, thank Daria. You. And uh, thank you to everyone who listened or watched. And see you next time.